So this is going to be the, the last moving forward video for this year in 2018. Uh, I am going to do the two finalists of this year MLS Cup in terms of their moving forward episode in 2019. And also, I have moved my microphone a little bit closer. I did hear somebody says that I put the mic a little bit too far and they couldn't hear my voice. So I decided to move it a little bit closer. Maybe this will help. Maybe this is going to be you guys can pretty much hear my voice a little bit better now. But either way, let's talk about Sporting KC. And Sporting KC, of course, finished the season with a record of 18 wins, 8 draws, and 8 losses. And they finished the season with 62 points, which is the best in the Western Conference. Uh, they've scored 65 goals this season. Yeah, 65 goals. That is a lot of goals that Sporting KC have scored. That's definitely more than the previous six or seven season when Peter Vermees was with this team. And they conceded only 40 goals, which it sounds really kind of... Consider what has happened this season with this team and how the defense definitely has took a huge step back. 40 goals, it sounds really kind of a low number consider how they defense this year i mean you would think they probably might have conceded 50 goals because of that but no they conceded only 40 goals and they still consider one of the best defense in the league um and they have a goal differential of plus 25 which is also one of the best in the league i think it's the third or second best in the league in terms of goal differential i know the red bulls are first but i think Atlanta has a a better goal differential than Sporting KC. I might be wrong, though. Um, and then they got eliminated by the Portland Timbers in the conference, and I always do this. It's not the semifinal. I, I made the same mistake when I was doing the Red Bulls moving forward series by putting putting it conference semifinal. No, they got eliminated in the conference final. Now, if they did got eliminated in the conference semifinal, then, yeah, Sporting KC fan will not be happy with what has gone on this season because once again for the six years in a row they would be eliminated in their first game in the playoffs but as i'm going to be talking about later in this video they finally got over that hump uh your goal scorers in terms of this season for sporting kissy or your top goal scorer uh, unfortunately this light is kind of like beaming down so i'm gonna just kind of move this a little bit um, you got Daniel Sharawi with 11 goals. Most of those goals came in October in that crucial time of the period. Uh, Johnny Russell with 10 goals. Most of them came very early in the season. And you got Diego Rubio at 8 goals. Felipe Gutierrez with 7. And Gerson Fernandez with 5 goals to his name. Uh, top assist leader, Johnny Russell with 10 assists. Roger Espinosa with 9. Uh, Daniel Sharawi with 7. Graham Zuzzi with seven, and Diego Rubio with six assists. So what went right for Sporting KC? Um, they finally won a playoff game. I mean, this is the first time in five years that they finally got over that hump. It's always been a problem for Sporting KC whenever they go into the playoffs. It's that they just completely shit the bets once the, the playoffs begins. Like they, They're kind of like their counterpart, the Kansas City Chiefs, where they just choked when they come out of the gate of the playoffs. But that curse is finally broken this year by beating RSL in a very competitive two-legged affair. And certainly, if it wasn't for the Seattle Sounders versus Portland Timbers as what I think is the best series out of this playoff, this would be right up there because it was very, very competitive, especially the second leg. Um, they didn't crumble down the stretch. So one of the reasons why I think this team finally got over the hump is that they did not have that usual kind of stretch in September and October where they just kind of leap into the, the playoff with just very, very tired leg and just low on Compton. It's been a problem for Sporting KC the last couple of years. And hence, that is why they just failed in their first game off the playoffs in each of those seasons but this time they didn't they didn't crumble down the stretch they show a lot of tenacity and a lot 
of just toughness to just hanging there. And even though in some of the games that coming down the stretch, they didn't really play as well, you know, what is different between this Sporting KC team from the from previous Sporting KC team, as I've seen this season, is that though this Sporting KC team, even when they're not playing very well, they're able to come through down the stretch. That is something I have not seen Sporting KC done in the past couple of years, and that is why I've been keep saying this team, just with all the adversity that's been facing, I feel like this is finally the year that they they can break through, and unfortunately, that did not happen and in many ways I kind of jinxed them in terms of the conference final um, but w the other thing that went right for them is that they are well the best attacking and defensive team in the league so for many years Sporting KC has known as the best defensive team in the league because they have some of the best defender in the league like Aiko Opara and Matt Beasler and they also have one of the best goalkeeper and probably the most underrated goalkeeper in the league that is Tim Melia uh, but this season, it seemed like they kind of have both of that same kind of kind of thing that they, they kind of wanted to, and it kind of works for them. You know, they, they score a lot of goals this season, um, and at the same time, they, they didn't concede a lot of goals. Although, as I've said before, you know, this number doesn't really tell you the fact that Sporting KC was very kind of lackadaisy. In terms of the defense, if you watch some of the Sporting KC game, especially when they play against top opponent, you saw so many times that they had to do some last ditch defending, and it was just some last ditch scrambling and stuff like that. And there are most of the time they got really lucky of not conceding a goal doing those things, and that they could have conceded more than just the forty that they did. In and in some way, I think it's kind of remarkable the fact that they only conceded 40 goals consider how much of a panic and how much of a scramble they always have in those big games but yeah um what still needs to improve and you know going back to talk about the defensive side of sporting kc you know i've been hearing there's been a rumor that sporting kc is going to get a number nine and i'm kind of jumping toward the moving forward right now now, but I've been hearing there are rumors that they potentially are going to trade Apara and maybe they're going to get Ola Kamara as a number nine because one of the thing about Sporting KC that has just, one of their biggest thing that they, they need to improve is that they just don't have a, a true number nine. And although this season Diego Rubio did a very good job in terms of that road down the stretch, yeah, he's no longer there anymore. He's with the Colorado Rapids, so now they just don't have a true number nine, and I think that is something that Peter Vermees is going to maybe address in the future. I know Vermees for many years have been trying to make this team good without a number nine and try to prove people that you don't really need a number nine to succeed in the league, and in some way, he has definitely proven that in the past couple of years, but I just feel like it's a matter of time where they just need a true number nine. Like, this season and throughout the past season, they've been rely heavily on their wingers and also heavily on their midfielder to score goals, which is good, but eventually it's not going to always work out for you. So I think they, they definitely need a true number nine in the future, which is why they've been heavily linked with Ola Kamara from the Galaxy and that potentially they're going to get get Kamara but they have to trade it away Opara to get him which will definitely weaken the defense but at the same time they will finally be even more lethal in terms of the attack and you would say I would say that this could be like Atlanta United if they do have a true number nine because it's just it's a very fun team to watch when that attack is is really clicking um, but going back to what still needs to improve, well, they still need to clear that final hurdle. So as much as they finally got over the hump of not winning a playoff game in, for the first time in fi five years, um, or not, not able to win a playoff game in the last five years, they finally cleared that, but yet they stumble in the conference final in a game that I... I'm really surprised that they didn't make it through. I didn't think Portland was going to make it through. Consider the fact that Sporting KC 
their quality was definitely better than the Timbers and the fact that Sporting KC were playing at home, nevertheless. So, and really, in that game, Sporting KC dominated that game. Like, the only time when they were looking very lackadaisy was in the first 15 minutes of the second half. And then the rest of the way, they just look absolutely dominated. Thing. But because of the fact that they, they were very lax to Daisy in that 15 minute, and because of the fact that in that 15 minutes, that's when the Timbers scored those two goals, that is pretty much the reason that they got eliminated. I mean, the old saying is true of the, of the fact that if you make just tiny mistake, and the fact that this game is a, a, a just, oh god, I, I actually could not think about that cliche again. It's kind of like this game is just a, a, a small margin of, of the way. And if you make some mistakes in a short amount of time, it can ultimately haunt you back at the end of the game. And that's what happened in that game. And, you know, I'm sorry if I did not come up with a good kind of cliche in, in terms of that. I thought I had it in my mind for a second and then it just gone like that um but the other thing that they need to improve and really there isn't a lot that sporting kc need to improve i think this is a very stacked team and that i definitely think they're going to be competing again next season but maybe their defense need to be tightened up a bit and that could be a thing that they're not going to think about improving considering as i said before they're maybe trading away Ico para to get Ola Kamara and get a true number nine you know we'll see we'll see if that deal does went through and then of course moving forward and I think I, I kind of talked about it throughout the last couple of minutes is that they're going to be competing again next year I mean Sporting KC this is one of the the few MLS team that has just been very consistent for the past couple of years I mean ever since Peter Vermees has taken over this team this team has always made the playoffs and i think they have made the playoff nine years in a row i mean that is some incredible consistency so there's no doubt that they're going to be competing again and that they're going to be definitely be in the playoffs and they're going to be considered one of the favorites in mls cup i think they're a team that is going to be the favorites coming out of the west again i won't be surprised if they find themselves at the top of the the standing in the western conference Considering the fact that the West is still, you know, when you look at the West, you know, the East for the last couple of years has definitely been been better than the West. And, you know, even though this year the West has got a little bit stronger, I just think Sporting KC will still have enough and that they're, they're going to probably find themselves in the top two or even in the top spot in the Western Conference. Um, and, you know... As I mentioned before, they need a number nine in the future, and they're potentially going to get get it with Ola Kamara, and you know that's going to be a be interesting to see how it is. I mean, if Ola Kamara comes into this team, I guarantee you this team will score more than sixty goals. I mean, with Ola Kamara, Daniel Sharawi, Johnny Russell, Felipe Gutierrez, yeah, that is a very stack attack, and they can do damage any given days and that i really think that this team could be kind of like atlanta united where it's going to be just attack 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 although i don't think both team really share a similar style you know atlanta united it's all about attack and you know having all the possession and sporting kc at time they've done that but sporting kc is also kind of like a pressing team too they love to to press on opponent they don't do as well as what the red bulls did the red bulls are still the best pressing team but they also do very well in terms of pressing and that's maybe as well the reason why they have so many they they receive so many of these chances is because when they press opponent when they win the ball back straight away they will create those good chances and potentially put the ball into the back of the net so yeah that is it for this moving forward series for sporting kc and that is pretty much it for the moving forward series for this year let me know in the comments below what do you think of this if you're a sporting kc fan what do you think of this season do you think this season was a success or a failure you know in my opinion i think it is a success i know that they didn't get to mls cup and i know that's a huge disappointment 
but considering the fact that they finally got rid of that voodoo, you know, they 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 can of course build on that. And as the old saying goes, it's one step at a time. And I think next season this is definitely a team that can go into MLS Cup and even win the whole thing. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash that subscribe button, and yeah, I will see you guys next time.